You are welcome to Educational World Selaxi. Thank you for tuning in. This is my prediction for the electricity. Connect the circuit as shown above. Set the value R 30 ohms. Close the key and obtain a balance point T on the potentiometer wire PQ. Read and record the length TQ equal to L. Evaluate the inverse of L and the inverse of R. Repeat the experiment for different values of R, which are 20, 10, 5, 3, and 1 ohm, respectively. And in each case, determine the inverse of L, inverse of R, and L. Tabulate your readings, plot the graph of R on the vertical axis and L inverse on the horizontal axis. Sorry, plot the graph of R inverse on the vertical axis and L inverse on the horizontal axis, starting both axes from the origin. Determine the slope of the graph and its intercept on the vertical axis. So let's go to the requirements for the question now. We were given the following set of apparatus for our experiments in electricity. So these are connecting wires. We have our connecting wires, as you can see. So the next one is the key or switch. So this is the key or switch. As you can see. So we have our, our resistance box. This is our resistance box. This is the center zero galvanometer. The center zero galvanometer okay now this is the two ohms and one ohm resistor respectively the two ohms resistor is the unknown resistance marked x while the one ohm resistor is the known resistance so we are going to now we have the battery this is our battery as you can see 1.5 volts each connected in series so this is our meter bridge this is our meter bridge the meter bridge is different from the potentiometer just in the sense that it has uh, gaps it has two gaps this one which is used to connect a, a resistor across it and this one as well which is used to in connection for a, res a resistor as well and this aluminum strip so these are that's the difference between the meter bridge and the potentiometer so this is our apparatus in full so in connection setting up our connection this is our battery our battery the wires has already been connected at the two at the ends or the terminals of the battery as you can see so we ensure that our connection our connection is tight we have tight connections okay that's one of the precautions we take so we also connect uh, our wires at the end of the two ohms resistor so these two ohms resistor now we are going to connect it at one at one of the gaps at one of the gaps of the meter bridge so we connect the two ohms resistor at one of the gaps of the meter bridge as you can see so and ensure that your connections are tight so I have connected my two ohms resistor at one of the gaps. Okay, so I'm going to connect the one ohm resistor. Now, this is the one ohm resistor. I'm going to connect it at the other gap on the meter bridge. So I have done my connection, as you can see. So make sure you are taking note of every detail. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do now is to connect my resistant box in parallel to the unknown resistance which is the two ohms resistor so i'm connecting the resistant box in parallel to the two ohms resistor which will which will be marked x for you there so as you can see this is the connection that is how it's made so it's done now the next stage in our connection now is to connect our battery so we connect our battery to one one of the ends of we connect the battery at the end of the one ohm resistor where the one ohm resistor is connected we connect our battery there then the other end of the battery we connect it to the key as you can see 
we connect it to the key and the other end of the key we connect it to the last uh, the other uh, terminal the other end of the meter bridge okay as you can see so the next thing we do now is to connect our center zero galvanometer but before we do that i want you to see something very important how this connection is run that is the positive terminal of the battery from the positive terminal of the battery to where the connection of the galvanometer is made from positive to positive as you can see from positive to positive positive while the negative terminal of the galvanometer is connected to the jockey so and that jockey is placed along the wire that is on that uh, meter rule there that is the purpose of that jockey so this is our connection in full so from this terminal we connected our battery okay first of all we connected our one ohm resistor here at this gap as you can see okay so we connected two ohms resistor at this other gap with the resistance box in parallel to it all right so the next thing we did was the next thing we did was to connect one end of our battery to from that place where the one ohm resistor was connected to the negative terminal of the battery then from there from the positive terminal of the battery we move to the key okay now now from the other end of the key we make our connection back to the meter bridge okay and then we then go ahead so from positive terminal of the battery running around going through going all through you know entering at this point now so we connect the positive terminal of the galvanometer to that point okay so the positive terminal of the galvanometer is connected in line with the positive terminal of the battery this is very very important so so performing the practical now so we set our resistance to um, 30 ohms so we have to remove a uh, 20 and 10 when we remove 20 and 10 now that means that the resistance has been set to 30 ohms so we will now go back and uh, close our key and with our jockey make contact on the meter bridge and look for points where the deflection of the galvanometer is zero so as you move your jockey along the meter rule there along the meter rule on the meter bridge you see the deflection of the galvanometer will be changing so you keep moving or dragging the jockey along that uh, meter bridge until until the deflection on the center zero galvanometer is zero so when that deflection is zero you check the reading okay so now the deflection is zero so checking the reading the length checking the length the length from from the other end from the other end where the unknown resistor is connected to where the the the, the jockey is now uh, reading of that length we have it is a 68.4 68.4 cm as you can see 68.4 cm so we take down the reading okay on our table of values so setting the resistance to 20 ohms now which means i will close 10 ohms and leave 20 ohms open so now going back our key is still closed using our jockey making contact on the meter bridge and looking for positions where the deflection of the center zero galvanometer is zero so and that reading is a uh, 67 67.00 at the dot so we take that reading down so we go back to our resistance box and set it to 10 ohms so we will close 20 and open and open the, the 10 so when we open 10 the resistance has been set to 10 ohms so we go back 
you know our our key is still closed then with the jockey with the jockey we will make contact with the meter bridge make contact with the uh, wire on that uh, meter bridge and drag until the deflection of the center zero galvanometer is zero so we keep doing that and when the value becomes zero when the value becomes zero so here now the centers okay now to be sure let's let me go back again and drag along okay as you can see watch closely so now the the reading on the center zero galvanometer is approaching zero okay is zero now now let's check the reading on the meter rule there so checking the reading on the meter rule there we can see that the value there is 65.65.5 cm 65.5 cm as you can see so we record that on our table of values and we now set the resistance box to be 5 ohm so we close 10 and open 5 so that's 5 you can see that's 5 so we open 5 so the resistance box has been set to 5 ohms now so we now go back our key is still closed we using our jockey now we make contact on the meter bridge watch watching out for point of um zero alignment on the center zero galvanometer so the center zero galvanometer now is at zero so we'll go back to our meter rule there and look at the point where it is and that point is a uh, this is a uh, 64.1 64.1 cm so 64.1 cm we take note of that so we go back to the resistance box this time around and set it to 3 ohms. So we close 5 and we can see 2 ohms here. We open 2 ohms and we open 1 ohm. So the 2 ohms and 1 ohm give us 3 ohms. So we use our jockey again and move on the meter bridge and uh, observing closely until the deflection on the center zero galvanometer is zero. So now the deflection is zero. Looking at our reading, you can see that the distance there is um, that is 57. We take note of that. So now setting our resistance box now to one ohm. So we close everything and open only one. So we close the two and open one now. So the resistance box has been set to one ohm. So we now have to go back okay with our key closed and with our jockey we now have to make contact on the meter bridge make contact along the wire on the meter bridge and observe the deflection of the center zero galvanometer such that the deflection becomes zero okay so watch the deflection of the center zero galvanometer as i'm moving dragging my hand with the jockey along the meter bridge so now the deflection on the center zero galvanometer to be sure okay now the deflection is zero so let's look at our reading so looking at the meter rule on that meter bridge so the 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 the, the deflection the distance there is at uh, the length there is a uh, 51.8 close to 52 so we will take our reading now for our table of values we can see we have um, obtained our table of values and evaluated the val evaluated the r inverse and l inverse respectively as you can see our table of values has a uniform number of decimal placements okay now let's go to the graph plotting without much ado so we are plotting the graph of R inverse against L inverse and the slope used here is 2 cm to represent 0 0.5 units on the vertical axis 
2 cm to represent 0 0.005 units on the horizontal axis okay so this is very important as you can see our table of values having uniform number of decimal placements so let's go straight to plotting the points so when l inverse is 0 0.0146 r is 0 0.033 we mark out the points as you can see so the next one when l inverse is 0 0.0149 our inverse is 0 0.05 we mark out the points we go to the next one when l inverse is 0 0.0152 our inverse is 0 0.1 <coughs> we mark out the points we're going to the next one now when l inverse is 0 0.0156 our inverse is 0 0.2 we mark out the points now when l inverse is 0 0.0175 our inverse is 0 0.33 we mark out the points now joining these points with a very straight line graph okay as you can see the line of best fits i am not omitting l when l inverse is on 0 0.0193 our inverse is 1. I will have indicated it there. You will see it. So normally to solve for slope, slope is usually change in the vertical axis or over change in the horizontal axis. Okay. So now looking at from the right angle triangle I drew. So change in the vertical axis is 0 0.055 minus minus 1. Then in the horizontal axis, it is 0 0.019 minus 0 0.0056. And simplifying that, we have that the value of the slope S is 115.67 cm per ohm. Now, looking at the intercept, the intercept on the vertical axis is at the, the value minus 1.65 per ohm. Concerning this electricity graph plotting, so many persons will find it difficult in the scale. So what I did here is at the horizontal axis, I used 2cm to represent 0.005 units. And this is how I was able to read off my scale. Okay, from 0 to 0 0.005, we have 10 spaces. So the first one is 0 0.001, 0 0.002. 0 0.003, 0 0.004, and lastly 0 0.005. So this is how I read off. I read off the points at the horizontal axis. So at the vertical axis, we have 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20, okay, 0 0.25, 0 0.30. 0 0.35 then up to 0 0.45 and lastly 0 0.5 so this is how to read of the points